I wish I had this back in school. Can Google with you, huh? We're here today at Jurongville Secondary School to join some students in their lower secondary science lessons. We're going back to school because a lot has changed in the last 10 to 15 years. In 2020, MOE rolled out a new science curriculum framework. The last time this was changed was in 2004, which is even before I went to secondary school. Let's check out what we'll be learning today. Okay, good morning, class. Thank you. Please take a seat. Today, we will touch on interactions within ecosystems. So, I want you to take out your PLD and log into class point. How do human activities impact the environment that we are staying in now? The waste we produce, electricity use, that rhymes. A lot of vehicles, a lot of industrial processes actually produces a lot of greenhouse gases. So what do you think are some measures that Singapore has taken to actually conserve and manage the climate change? Thank you for your answer. Let's see. Planting more trees by the roadside. Why do you think planting trees is important? Produce more oxygen. Good. What else? Reduce carbon dioxide. Okay, so what we're going to do now is do a biodegradable planter. We can try using eggshells. It is decomposable. It can act as fertilizer if you're going to replant it. Have you guys done activities like this before? Like where it's like hands on? Not yet this year. One of you from each pair will come and take an eggshell and then you choose the plant that you like. Okay, so tomatoes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm making a biodegradable planter. So this is eggshells and then this is like soil. And I think the teacher mentioned that the soil is like basically made from coffee plants. Um, you know, because it's all recycled and reused. So what kind of condition do you require for your plant to grow? Yeah? pH 6 to 6.8. pH 6 to 6.8. So you have a pH of... So main thing about this ecosystem uh, chapter, right? It's not like chemistry or other chapters where there is a formula, there's a concept for the students to really go and memorise and understand. So this is really for the students to really understand what is happening around us and able to appreciate and then come up with solutions to solve certain problems that they have or they, we, are, we are all facing in the world. Okay, thank you, So just let me do a bit of recap first. We went through the design thinking process. You must first identify the group or the issue that you're trying to work with or solve. It can be rising tides, it could be climate change, it can be in agriculture, planting and many other areas. You all have already worked hard to make your prototypes. Okay, I see, I think you will be able to later do the last step as well, which is to test your prototypes. What, what stage are you guys at, at the, for the prep for this? Uh, for this, we have finished almost everything except for the group photo. Excellent. We wanted to solve the problem of like noise pollution, mm -hmm. but also to warn people in case of the illegal um, human activities, such as like, the hunting or cutting down of trees yeah. without pollution. This thing is the sensor? Oh. It detects if it's like the soil is wet. So if the soil is not wet, it will it water the plant. Okay. All the trash will basically get ready to drop down. Mm -hmm. All the bigger trash will be or the bigger trash will just get stuck because of this compound. Mm -hmm. A nicer name for your device. Like a, like a, it's a device. What do you name the device? My device is detection of illegal human activities in the yes. forest. <laughs> yes. It's a lot of application learning, getting them to apply knowledge they have from different places and specifically to link it to electronics. 
So apart from being hands-on, students actually also learn how to think in a logical and systematic manner, and also at the same time they get to demonstrate their creativity as well. So I prefer group work is because I get to socialize with my friends, and it's more in, like it's more interesting when you uh, do it with your friends because you can joke around and like have fun while doing the project, and with more people you can also think of like better things to uh, do for your project. And so for me, I like how I build my prototype, which is uh, very nice because. I'm not good at coding, so my other teammates help me to coding. But I build, which helps me think on different ways to make it uh, better understand when other people see what my prototype is. I had a lot of fun. I found it very interesting, and it's really very different from back when I was in school. It struck me that no one else in the class had like a notebook and pen in front of them. So I turned to my seat partner, a very nice girl named Swati. I asked her, you know, like if she needs to take notes, what does she use? And she said that she uses Google Docs. The other thing was during the question and answer, you know, like when the teacher was throwing out questions and asking the students to answer them, it was through the device, you know, like they could put out a question and then students could type in their answers and then the answers would all appear on the board. It was a lot quicker and more engaging. They could easily discuss each other's answers. In this class, the teacher provided a lot of details that were related to contextual topics that are relevant to society today. So all this application I felt really helps to get students interested in the why we are learning science. It makes them realise what's important about the facts that they are learning um, rather than just memorising a bunch of facts for exam.